Hello guys, I hope you are doing great. Let's go through a little bit advanced topic now in this video, right? This is 15th video in the Databricks series. And now we are going to talk about Delta Lake in this video. First thing first, maybe you might be confused. What is Delta Lake kind of things, right? What I'm trying to do first is just give you brief introduction to what is Delta Lake. And there are the links for you to explore more. In the table of contents, as you can see, there are many things to cover and we will go step by step. Let's get started. Okay, so now I am on the notebook as I have shown you before also. So first thing first, what is Delta Lake, right? So it is the optimized storage layer that provides the foundation for storing data and tables in the Databricks Lakehouse platform, right? So Delta Lake is the default for all reads, writes and table creation commands in Databricks runtime 8 and above. So whenever you create some table out of maybe let's say CSV file also, it is going to be stored as a Delta table, right? I will provide this notebook in the description of this video. So you can go through this in the links also here. Let's not go through the theoretical part more. This is just the things I took from the official documentation. If you go through this link, then you will get all the info. I will just first show you two different things and you will get the idea, right? First, I'm going to list, of course, the things which I have already done here. By the way, I have already run this notebook so that it takes some time to run some of the commands, not to take you too much of time. I have a list the things here. And as you can see, there is the CSV file. How to create the table out of it? You can say, okay, drop table if exists, meaning that if there is some table before, we drop it, right? and create table if not exist. The name of the table I have given is delay flights. As, right, select all and we need to provide the path from where we are reading the table. So we are getting the path from here, right? So as you can see here, this CSV file, and we need to provide these read files in order to read this CSV file. When I run this command, what happens here is the delay flights table is being created. By the way, just to make sure again that I'm using SQL notebook. So when I run the SQL commands, I don't need to provide percentage SQL. But if you notice here for Python, I am providing percentage Python. And another practicality is also before you need to attach the cluster, right? So yeah, now if I say describe detail delays, delay flights, as you can see here, it says format is Delta, but we didn't provide any format here. That is the thing I said to you that whatever you create the table in Databricks, it will be in the Delta format. And it will show you the ID, name, description, location, created date, and all the different things as you can see here, right? This is the good part of using Delta in Databricks. Now that is the CSV file. Now let's read some Delta tables. As you can see here, when I go and run this dbutils.fs.ls Databricks dataset, learning Spark version to people, there are many datasets here. And there is also this people-10m dataset. There is Spark dataset, there is Delta and all different things. Now, how to read that, right? Here I am again saying drop table if exist people underscore 10 million because this is 10 million data. And I said here, create table if not exist, same as before, as select all from Delta. As you can see here, as we are reading the Delta tables, we need to provide Delta dot and this is the path of the file. And if you run this cell, it will work. Just to maybe demonstrate you, if you don't provide the Delta, it will throw us the error. So let's say that I want to just read from this path. It's already providing me some error. So it says I could not find high vist or something, something, right? When you always read the Delta table, let me clear this. You need to provide Delta dot and it will be read. So now you can say describe detail people underscore 10 million, which is the name of the table we created. It shows here, okay, this is Delta. Of course, we know that. And this is the ID. This is the name is Spark catalog dot default dot people 10 and the description now location, where is the location? When I run this, what happens behind the scene is if I go to this table, as you can see here, there is default, 
right? And there is delay flights which I created before and there is people underscore 10M. So that is where the table is being created. But this is not the location, but this is the table being created. For the location, it says user hive. If I go to DBFS, I can see there is the user and there is warehouse, user hive warehouse. So if I go one step back, so there is user, there is hive, right? And there is warehouse. If I go one step inside, there is delay flights as well as people underscore 10 million. I'll close this now, right? What we can do now is we can just use the normal SQL commands, count all from people 10. So there is 10 million records, right? So that is why we keep underscore 10. What are the things that we can do? Now, let's say that we want to upsort to a table, two more or set of updates and insertions into an existing Delta table. You can use more into a statement. And if I make this bigger, but I have provided you this link, you can go there and see more details. I want to upsort something into the existing table, right? Here I said, create or replace temp view. I'm creating view people updates. And I have provided the name of the columns here and as value. So these are the values being provided and merge into people 10 so that I want to merge the people updates table into the people underscore 10 million using people updates using this particular temp table on right people underscore 10 em dot id equals to people underscore updates dot id we need to have at least one column where we can merge right and when mass then update set all when not match then insert all i hope the name is itself explanatory here when there is some match then update it when there is no match then insert it right but when i run this cell as you can see here it is throwing some error for me so why it is throwing some error because as you can see here we are using this date time as a string right but the birth date must be in time stamp format right just to show you what I am going to do here is describe the table. If I describe the table, there is this column name, there is the data types and the comment. But if you see the birth date is timestamp. But what did we provided here is in the string format. So how to resolve that, right? I have seen many people being confused here. So I'm just showing you this example so that it's clear for you. Now, by the way, if you just want to see the columns, you can use show columns from table. That's easy as that. What I need to do here is try cast birth date as time stamp, right? So I'm casting that string birth date column into the time stamp so that it gives the answer. So as you can see here, when I run this, there is no error. And then how many uh, rows are affected? Six, because we have added six different rows. Number of updated rows is three and number of deleted rows, there is nothing. And number of inserted row is three. Now you get the idea when we use the command, when mass then update set, meaning that three rows are masked. So it updated those rows and three were not masked. That's why it inserted there. That's how we deal with this one, right? So, okay, that's fine. We uh, we insert something, meaning that we upsort. Just to show you, we upsort to a table. Now, how to read from the table? That is also one thing we need to do. So, read from the table is as simple as it is here. Select all from people 10, limit 10. Why I am providing limit 10 is because I don't want to display many rows here, right? It just displays the thing for me here. So you can even do describe detail people 10 as I showed you before, it will show you the same thing here, right? One thing, what you can do is you can select all from the table itself or you can select from the path. This is the reason I displayed this here because in order to get the location, I am using this describe detail table what i did here select all from table limit 10 right but what what else also i can do is select all from delta dot and then the 
path of that particular location dbfs then it also provides me the same answer there is two ways you can perform any way is fine i think this one is way easier but if you have some different locations always use this describe it will give you the location and then you can use that to uh, view the data or select the data whatever you want to do let's say that we want to update a table so how can we update the table right it's as simple as that update the name of the table and the gender there is this set and female i want to say okay gender female where gender is f and where yeah then we want to use male so that's how we can update the table what happens when we run this it says that okay this much rows is affected but now if i do select all from this as you can see here the gender is now female 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 and if there is f then it is female if there is m then it becomes male but before if you go here it says m and f that's how you can update a table now let's say that we want to delete from a table how to do that as simple because sql is so easy language if you know what you are trying to do because it's just how we speak right we want to delete from the table where birth date is less than this value so that's that simple right what next display table history now it is going to be more interesting why we are using the delta you can display the table history how to display the table history is describe history people underscore 10 m so it shows us all the history what we did until now so this operation is quite good here we create table as select from the first one then we merge then we update then we update and then we delete something right we know that what is happening behind the scene when we do each and every operation it is really helpful when you are dealing with some data and you want to go back and see i will just show you how we can do that now right okay we did all of this and now query an earlier version of the table so what is that called that is called time travel this is really good concept here so let's say that i want to view the version zero of the data you you are now on the version four which is the latest one right but let's say that you want to view the version zero or whatever you want to do but i'm using here version zero it is as simple as that select all from table version as of zero limit 10 if you want to use version 2 just replace this with 2 and then limit 10 it will show us the version as you noticed here other things it you might uh, think that it is the same but here the gender is m and f but we have already changed that to male and female right you get the idea we are viewing the time travel meaning that we went back and view the uh, table that we have loaded before so that is what we it is called time traveling and by the way one one good part here is also that instead of version you can just copy the time stamp and then use the data just to show you here i have provided some time stamp so you can you need to replace this with the time that you ran that particular version now optimize the table now it's getting more interesting here by the way this will be more intuitive and good to learn when you start experimenting yourself so i highly recommend you to try it yourself rather than just watching the video so that you know okay what is happening there if you just get what is happening there it will be more fun to go through now optimize a table so what is optimize as name suggests once you have performed multiple changes to a table you might have a lot of smaller files right to improve the speed of read queries you can use optimize to collapse small files into larger ones so that is the concept but you need to be a little bit careful when you run this one because don't just run the command i'm not going to explain in depth about that right now this is delta things is completely new series or playlist kind of um, topic but here you can just type optimize name of the table right that's all you, you can do by the way if you want to know more then you can go through the databricks documentation and see more but this is just the command that you can run and it collapses small files into the larger ones and now z ordering by columns 
right there is the useful read you can go through this i have provided the link so z ordering is a technique used in delta lake to collocate related information in the same set of files so it becomes a little bit confusing i think it should be <laughs> collocate related information in the same set of files which is automatically used by the delta lake in data skipping algorithms there are many things happening behind the scene but the main gist of this is by reorganizing the data in storage certain queries can read less data so they are faster you get the idea for that also what you can do is uh, yeah here optimize table that we did just before but we can provide z order by and the name of the column you can provide any column here it is gender so that it is optimized based on that particular column right and now let's say that we did so many things now how to clean up snapshots we can use that with the vacuum command if you have too much of the snapshots it's not good right you need to be careful into that how to clean up you can just run vacuum that's as simple as it gets vacuum and the name of the table then all of those small or old snapshots you can clean with this particular command so yeah that's all for this video we went so many of the things into the delta i just want to cover this because this is one of the things that you need to learn as you start working in databricks because by default as i said before the table is created in delta and we can use so many different things to make our work much more easier and organized right i hope you learned something new today don't stress too much if you are a completely beginner as you start working in databricks it will be much easier and okay this is how it works kind of scenario but yeah that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next one